There are four key things that I learned from this current illness. And the first one is God cannot heal what is not revealed. And I'm going to go into more detail about that in a moment. What is beneath the surface can kill you. I'll share more about that as well. It's like the iceberg when we think about the Titanic. The Titanic didn't sink because of what was on the surface. It sank because of what was underneath. Three, I have a responsibility to myself to desire healing. And then four, I am grateful it is what it is, not what it could have been. Thank you for tuning in to another episode of the Confidence Restored Podcast presented by CC America, also known as Confidence Centers of America and hosted by Tamaria Jordan. This is a show designed to help you build your confidence, increase your faith and get mentally fit to overcome any trials and tribulations you may encounter. Through personal testimonies of faith, inspiration, and transformation, Tamaria and guests seek to inspire and uplift you. This message is delivered by us, CCing you on lessons learned in hopes of encouraging you regardless of where you are in life. Enjoy the show. Hello, and welcome to another live taping of the Confidence Restored podcast. I am your host, Tamaria Jordan, and today we are talking about being sick of it. And I titled this Sick of It, God Cannot Heal What Is Not Revealed because I haven't been feeling well for almost a week now. And in the course of getting sick, I had a revelation over this past weekend. And when I say that I have been in pain, literally the pain started on Tuesday and it's been consistent. I have gotten a little bit of relief as of today but I'm going to give you all a little bit of background about how this happened and what I'm feeling now and also the lesson that is being learned and that was revealed to me. And so there are four key things that I learned from this current illness. And the first one is God cannot heal what is not revealed. And I'm going to go into more detail about that in a moment. What is beneath the surface can kill you. I'll share more about that as well. It's like the iceberg when we think about the Titanic. The Titanic didn't sink because of what was on the surface. It sank because of what was underneath. Three, I have a responsibility to myself to desire healing. And then four, I am grateful it is what it is, not what it could have been. And so just to backtrack, again, I started feeling bad on Tuesday and it initially started as just a toothache. You may be able to hear a little bit now where it sounds like I have some sinus issues, which I'm going to get to that as well. But it started out with a um, throbbing toothache and it felt like literally just a stabbing pain in my face on the left side. And I knew I needed to get help as soon as possible because in the past, I had an experience with regard to having an abscessed tooth where it was extremely painful. And I remember working with a colleague who literally told me that whenever you have a situation like that, it is imperative that you get help as soon as possible because he actually coded from a toothache. And the reason I say point number one is God cannot heal what is not revealed, much like that toothache that my former colleague did not realize was potentially deadly to him. It's the same thing. The issue that I'm having is beneath the surface. It's a tooth that was already treated for a root canal, yet somehow, even on the surface where it doesn't look like there's any cracks on the x-rays or anything like that, somehow infection was able to get underneath the tooth and in the gums, which is what caused that stabbing pain. And when I think about healing and I think about things being revealed, I it came to me as I was driving back, I was like, wow, God cannot heal what is not revealed. I didn't know that I had an infection underneath the surface of my tooth because I couldn't see it. And so like I shared with regard to the Titanic, many of us may be walking around with situations or things that are beneath the surface, but the reason we can't get the healing is because we can't see it. And so I looked up the possibility of dying from a tooth infection because of what my former colleague had shared with me. And Jennifer Archibald, who is a doctor of dental surgery, she wrote an article for Healthline where she talked about, although it's rare, it is possible for a tooth infection to kill you. 
if left untreated because it can spread to other parts of your body within weeks or within months. But once it does spread, sometimes people can die within days if you don't get to the hospital soon enough. And I think back to what my former colleague told me about the importance of getting it treated, but he at the time did not realize how much of a dire situation he was in until things got really bad. And he actually coded and thank God he was able to be brought back, but he lived to be able to tell that story. So I remember that warning from him many years ago. It's probably been about 15 um, years at this point. It's been a long time, but I remembered that it stuck with me. And when I think about what's beneath the surface, a long time ago, uh, based on historical records in the 1600s, dental infections were listed as the fifth or sixth leading cause of death. Even up until the early 1900s, 1908 is what's quoted in this article, dental infections still ended in death between 10 to 40% of the time. Now, thankfully, due to advances in medicine, they have been able to decrease that number significantly. But when we think about it, again, it's beneath the surface. Unless we have some type of physical manifestation, whether that's pain, a visual abscess, or what have you, we may not realize what is brewing beneath the surface and how intense it can be and or how life altering it can be if left untreated. And so when you think about a dental infection, the infection, the bacteria, that which is hidden can spread to other parts of your body. And so when you think about life, there are a lot of situations and things that are hidden beneath our surface, experiences that we've had things that have been said to us, things that we've gone through and or seen other people go through. And all of that is hidden beneath our surface. We start to internalize those things. And then guess what happens? It starts to spread, meaning it spreads to how we feel about ourselves. It spreads to how we may treat others. It spreads to our thoughts. It spreads to what we believe. And so when I thought about what I'm currently going through, and as I was driving back from the dentist, I said, wow, that is such a powerful revelation because again, it's not what we can see that can hurt us. It's what's beneath the surface, which brings me to the second point. What is beneath the surface can kill us. And so when we think about the situations we experience in life, we think about things that we may go through, even something like rejection. When we feel rejected, we may start to act out of character because of what we're feeling. So beneath the surface and not necessarily kill us physically, but it could really drain us mentally. It could make us feel bad about ourselves or make us feel like, you know, there's no way out. There's no way up when the truth is there is help. There is healing on the other side of that pain that we may feel, but we may start to act, excuse me, out of character because of how we've been treated by other people. And so when we think about what's beneath the surface, earlier in this episode, I mentioned the Titanic. The Titanic did not sink because of what they could see on the surface. The Titanic sunk because of what was beneath the iceberg. And there are a lot of things sometimes that can be beneath our surface that is slowly killing us inside. And I know speaking from personal experience, I've been through some things in my life where I didn't realize how much it was eating away at me in terms of how I felt. And even right now, with regard to the feelings that I've been having with regard to um, this toothache, and now I have sinus issues combined, underneath the surface, it was creating pain, consistent pain. But it wasn't until I actually felt the pain that I knew I needed to get help. And so I advocated for myself to be seen by the doctors, even though when I called last week, they kept saying, we can't see you, we're booked, we don't have any availability. And what I did is I took the responsibility for my healing, which was point three that I mentioned earlier. And I drove two hours away just to see a dentist that could see me because I knew the situation that I was in could potentially have adverse effects if I did not get it treated. And like I said, having that stabbing pain consistently, it was unbearable. I literally took Advil, I took a leave, I took ibuprofen, they prescribed a narcotic, none of that relieved the pain, which told me that what was beneath the surface was something that was more serious than what met the eye. And so when I think about life, when I think about our faith, when I think about what we believe, 
Um, James 5, 16 says, therefore confess your sins to one another and pray for one another that you may be healed. The prayer of a righteous person has great power and it is working. And I think about the things that have been beneath my surface. So for instance, I have felt rejection many times throughout my life, whether in the workplace or in relationships. And that rejection made me act out in ways that I was surprised that I, I acted out in because I didn't realize the effects of what was beneath the surface and how it was hurting me. And then also in turn, what it was permitting me to allow other people to do in my life, allowing other people to project onto me and or manipulate me. But because it was beneath the surface, I didn't realize in that time what was happening. And so then I started to act out of character in response to how I was being treated. And so when I think about James 5, whenever we have things that are going on in our lives, I feel like the enemy wants us to go into a corner. He wants us to hide. He doesn't want us to talk about it because heaven forbid you tell your business. But I think that is what keeps us bound is not being able to have anyone to confide in. And for me, I thought it was great to be able to go to therapy. I'm glad I have family and friends I can confide in, but I realize not everyone has that. And for any individual that doesn't have that, being able to see a therapist or seeing someone to be able to get it out, get out what's beneath the surface so that you can start to heal and so that you can start to feel better, I think is so important. And then um, I was also reading Proverbs 14 and Proverbs 14 actually had a lot of really good nuggets. And starting in verse seven, it says, go from the presence of a foolish man when you do not perceive in him the lips of knowledge. The wisdom of the prudent is to understand his way, but the folly of fools is deceit. Fools mock at sin, but among the upright there is favor. The heart knows its own bitterness, and a stranger does not share its joy. The house of the wicked will be overthrown, but the tent of the upright will flourish. There is a way that seems right to a man, but its end is the way of death. Even in laughter, the heart may sorrow, and the end of mirth may be grief. The backslider in heart will be filled with his own ways, but a good man will be satisfied from above. And when I heard that, I said, wow, that in and of itself is powerful because when we think about what's underneath, that is what oftentimes may harm us. And when we think about there's a way that seems right to a man, but in its end, it leads to death. There are a lot of things that we may think it's okay. There are a lot of things that society has told us it's okay. There are a lot of things that other people may have done to us that we thought was okay. But in the end, it not necessarily means that it leads to physical death, but slowly you could be dying inside because of things that people have said and or done to you. And that's why I'm so passionate about helping individuals get mentally fit. And what I mean by that is faith, inspiration, transformation. So being able to share testimonies with other people, because the word reminds us that we are overcome by our testimonies. And again, what the enemy wants us to do is hide it beneath the surface, because again, God cannot heal what is not revealed. And so when I share the example of me this week being sick and not feeling well, I realized that also beneath the surface, I'm being treated for infection beneath my tooth. But what I did not realize is that I may also have a sinus infection. And so I looked up some of the symptoms I was having and I realized that my body is not only fighting the infection in my tooth, but also the sinus infection at the same time. And so the treatment that I'm receiving for my tooth is also helping me with regard to the sinus infection. And I literally said to myself, what if God allowed the pain for my tooth to help me realize and or get treatment for something else that was beneath the surface that I didn't even know I needed help for. And so I said, you know what? I thank God that it is what it is and it's not what it could have been. It's not what my former colleague went through when he coded because he had an infection that left untreated turned into sepsis or other people that have had stories where things have gotten worse because it was left untreated. So I thank God in hindsight, for the temporary pain so that I could be able to be, get healed. So when we think about the confession of sins, it's the same thing. Us being able to come out and say, 
hey, this is how I'm feeling. I am hurting right now. This is what I need. We are able to get help. And I'll pause really quickly and just say thank you for anyone that is tuning in right now. Know that we appreciate you tuning into the show. Make sure that you subscribe so you can know when we have live episodes that are released. But then also share this because you never know who could be blessed by the testimonies. The Confidence Restored podcast, there are several episodes that are on the YouTube channel, but then also on any podcast station. So definitely check out some of the past episodes because I wholeheartedly believe the testimonies of faith, inspiration, and transformation will be uplifting and encouraging to someone. And if we help one person, then we've done our part. So going back to the four points, the first again was God cannot heal what is not revealed. And we've talked about that to a degree, like what's beneath the surface. Two, what is beneath the surface can kill you. Three, I have a responsibility to myself to desire healing. And I touched on that when I said I drove two hours just to be seen. But when we think about our lives, we think about the situations we find ourselves in and or the situations other people put us in. We have a responsibility to ourselves to get healing, to go to God and say, you know what? I need help. I am not whole. I feel a certain type of way. I need this or I need that or finding people who can pray with us, who can pray for us, and who can help us. And what was interesting is, uh, also in Proverbs 14, starting in verse 16, it says, a wise man fears and departs from evil, but a fool rages and is self-confident. And so you may be wondering the Confidence Restored podcast. It came to me last October when I realized that what I thought I was going to be talking about, which is helping people increase their self-esteem because I realized so many people are hurting and broken. It came to me when I realized, wait a minute, that was not the premise of what I think God wanted me to do. He wanted me to help people see themselves how he sees us. And it's not just having confidence in ourselves, but also having confidence in our maker and what he says about us. So in Hebrews 10, 35, it says, do not throw away your confidence for if you do not, it will be richly rewarded. So essentially persevering through life situations. But in Proverbs 14, 26, what I read today is in the fear of the Lord, there is strong confidence and his children will have a place of refuge. So AKA a place of safety. Verse 27, the fear of the Lord is a fountain of life to turn away from the stairs of death. And so earlier when I was talking about death, again, it's not necessarily just a physical death, but a spiritual death. And so many people right now, because we think of all the things we're seeing in the world are dying inside. We look at other people and we let those other people essentially try to dictate to us how we should live and what we should do. So we look at those other people in their lives and we allow their lives and their testimonies to dictate how we may respond to our own life. And in Matthew 10, 26, also in Luke 8, 17, Luke 12, 2, and Mark 4, 22, it says, so have no fear of them for nothing is covered that will not be revealed or hidden that will not be known. And so I want to actually share a video from prophetess Victoria Orenzi, and it is so powerful. It says warning from God, but I thought about how many of us listen to what other people say, and then we choose our actions based on what we see other people do. To see the visual video, then please go to Confidence Restored on YouTube. That is the channel. So you see in that short clip that Prophetess Victoria Renzi essentially mentioned how when we see other people fall short, we may judge God according to what we see. And that in and of itself is dangerous because then we will be judged based on our own actions. It won't be based on what we see. And so I actually recorded something a little bit earlier that I will add to the stream so that you can see it. But for anyone listening, you will be able to hear it. And it was just a short rhyme that I I wrote or that I came up with today um, when I thought about how we make decisions based on what we see others do. We can't blame God because of man. He never told us to be their fans. He offers us healing that never lands. We fell right into the enemy's plan. And essentially what I meant by that is the fact that 
we literally will allow what we see other people do and or things that we see other people say or get away with or similar to what Prophetess Victoria Orenzi stated, when we see people falling because things are coming to light, we start to look at that and judge God according to what we see man, meaning man or women do. So when we think about that, it is not their responsibility. Their, our salvation is not anyone else's responsibility. It is for us to be able to, to judge things with righteous judgment according to the word of God and to have a responsibility to desire internal healing. So for me, I have been doing a lot of soul searching, a lot of healing and thinking about things that I've experienced in my life and realizing that my life is worth so much more and that the things that I see on the surface, the things that people have done and or said or how I've been treated is no match for the things of God. And so then I have a responsibility to say and to trust God that what is done in the dark will be will come to light and also that he is a righteous judge and that it's not for me to judge other people. It is for me to trust God to fight my battles and handle it for me. And so the last point that I made um, earlier that I wanted to talk about is that I am grateful it is what it is, not what it could have been. And when I say that, when I think about the warning from Prophetess Victoria Orenzi, I think about that example I mentioned about us literally we're blaming God because of situations that we see on this earth. We are blaming God because of man, but yet we don't even trust God enough to trust his word and what he says on the opposing end, where he says that he will not leave us nor forsake us, no matter what it looks like. Um, and literally reminding us not to have fear because nothing that is covered will not be revealed or hidden that will not be known. Everything that is in the darkness, he will bring to light. And in John 3, 16, 17, it says, God so loved the world, he gave his only son that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. And when we think about the world being saved through him, I am grateful that it is what it is, not what it could have been, because what it could have been is that we were all condemned to hell because of our sin, because we keep making mistakes. And even for me, I think about my situation being sick. It could have been that I didn't find out I had an infection until it was too late and I was hospitalized because it had already spread to my bloodstream. Or that, you know, I was in a situation where I'm unable to talk or unable to speak. Um, so there's so many alternatives. And I thank God that Right now, I am currently receiving treatment so that I can get better, that it is not the alternative situation that I'm walking through, but that it is one where I know that God's grace is essentially um, with me. And I have to trust and believe that I will be healed in this situation because, of course, I'm not making light of it. I know it can be a serious situation. And I thank God that I was able to go and get treatment, that I was able to advocate for myself and find someone that was willing to treat me and that had the capacity to do so, so that I could get better. And it was in that moment when I was driving back that those four key points that I mentioned throughout this show came to me. But I think they are so important when we think about our lives as Christians, we think about what we're seeing in this world. And I do encourage you to listen to that full video from prophetess Victoria Orenzi, because she is talking about this very thing. The fact that many people, because of what they see people in the faith do, are losing their faith in God. And it's not because of anything God did. It's because of what they're seeing. And here's the thing. The Bible warns us that it's going to get worse before it gets better. And so what she repeatedly said in that video is that he already told us of the things to come. So when we see it, we should not be surprised. We should not curse God because of it. Thank God Job didn't curse God because God restored everything that Job lost. He gave Job more in his latter years than what he had in his former years. But had Job listened to other people when they said, curse God and die, he would not have been able to see that and the enemy, his goal is to kill, steal, and destroy. His hope 
was that Job would give up and curse God and die. But thank God, Job was stronger than that. And Job said, no, no matter if if this affects my body, this affected his family, it affected him in ways that if any of us were to experience the heartache and the pain that he went through, we may have done exactly what the enemy wanted Job to do. But Job was steadfast in his belief of the word. He believed more about what God said rather than what the enemy said. Because the enemy wanted him to throw in the towel, wanted him to give up, wanted him to curse God and say, you know what, why why are you still believing God? God let this happen to you. The God that you serve let this happen to you. Why won't you curse him and die? But he didn't. He didn't. And in Job 42, we see that he was restored. And after he had a moment where he was able to talk to God about everything that he had gone through and all the different things that he had experienced. In in chapter 42, it says that Job replied to the Lord, I know that you can do all things. No purpose of yours can be thwarted. You asked, who is this that obscures my plans without knowledge? Surely I spoke of things I did not understand, things too wonderful for me to know. You said, listen now and I will speak. I will question you and you shall answer me. My ears had heard of you, but now my eyes have seen you. Therefore, I despise myself and repent in dust and ashes. After the Lord had said these things to Job, he said to Eliphaz the Temanite, I am angry with you and your two friends because you have not spoken the truth about me as my servant Job has. So now take seven bulls and seven rams and go to my servant Job and sacrifice a burnt offering for yourselves. My servant Job will pay for you and I will accept his prayer and not deal with you according to your folly. You have not spoken the truth about me as my servant Job has. So Eliphaz the Temanite, Bildad and the Shuhite and Zophar the Namathite did what the Lord told them and the Lord accepted Job's prayer. After Job had prayed for his friends, the Lord restored his fortunes and gave him twice as much as he had before. All his brothers and sisters and everyone who had known him before came and ate with him in his house. They comforted and consoled him over all the trouble the Lord had brought on him. And each one gave him a piece of silver and a gold ring. The Lord blessed the latter part of Job's life more than the former part. He had 14,000 sheep. 6,000 camels, a 1,000 yoke of oxen, and a 1,000 donkeys. And he also had seven sons and three daughters. The first daughter he named Jemima, the second Keziah, the third Karen Hapuk. Nowhere in all the land were there found women as beautiful as Job's daughters, and their father granted them an inheritance along with their brothers. After this, Job lived 140 years. He saw his children and their children to fourth to the fourth generation. And so Job died an old man and full of years. So Job was grateful that it was what it was and it was not what it could have been because he could have been dead. He wouldn't have had an opportunity to be able to see God turn it around. But because of his faith in God, because he did not curse God, his friends spoke against God and what they said weren't true about who God was and his character. And that's the one thing that I've been learning is that God is not man, meaning man or woman. God is not them. God is not the people that hurt you. God is not the person that wants to see us perish. But the enemy does. And so what does he do? He tries to kill, steal, and destroy by any means necessary. So I hope that this message was helpful to someone. Again, if we help one person, then that is a blessing for me. Um, And I am just doing what I felt in my spirit to do, which is share my own personal truth and remind you that God cannot heal what is not revealed. What is beneath the surface can kill you, but God has given us a way of escape. We have a responsibility to ourselves to desire the healing. 
God cannot heal what we hide. Essentially, if we don't confess our sins, if we don't go to him, if we don't repent for our sins, he cannot heal us. So we have a responsibility for part of our healing as well, because we have, he is not going to force himself on us. It is up to us to accept his son as our savior. And the last point, be grateful for what it is, not what it could have been, because what it could have been is that we were sleeping in our grave. But yet I thank God that I'm here to live another day, that I'm able to share my testimony and that I can continue to have faith and believe that my latter days will be better than my former days. So thank you so much for tuning in to another episode of the Confidence Restored podcast. I look forward to sharing more testimonies of faith, inspiration, and transformation, and also sharing my praise report because I'm believing that by his stripes, I am healed and that this situation will be resolved sooner rather than later. They did give me a date um, later this week to go back for a follow-up appointment and then a couple weeks later, but I'm hoping that they'll be able to get me in sooner than that so we can get this whole situation resolved. So on that note, I hope and pray that you and your families are well. And as I always say, keep on keeping on. Thank you for tuning in to another live taping of the Confidence Restored podcast by CC America. We are grateful that you tune in week after week and join us for testimonies of faith, inspiration, and transformation. Please be sure to rate, comment, and subscribe, and let others know that you are listening to the Confidence Restored podcast. You can also now buy us a coffee to show appreciation at buymeacoffee.com forward slash CC America. Until next time, be blessed.